Hi folks, my name is Jeremy and welcome to Retro Fat, a series where I am trying to become less of a fat guy so that I can cosplay as the Blue Power Ranger. Uh, obviously I could cosplay as the Blue Power Ranger right now. I don't think you need to be any certain body type to cosplay as whatever you'd like to cosplay as. However, I am not going to wear spandex in public. I want to wear armor and I don't want to do it fat. So there we go. Now, I have been fat for most of my life. I have certainly been thinner at times. I got down as low as the 260s at one point. This was about 18 years ago. Uh, I'd lost around 140 pounds. At that time, my highest weight was 402.8, which I know exactly because I was doing Weight Watchers. I was specifically doing the Weight Watchers program called Flex Points. Uh, and I had a lot of good luck with it. Uh, truth be told, what happened was I had a really bad breakup. Uh, got in a really bad headspace and slowly gained that weight back. Uh, I obviously ended up in a much better headspace. I've been with my wife for going on 17 years now. We've been married for 15. Um, and my life is great. Uh, I have an amazing son. I am have a great job. Everything is great, except I'm carrying too much weight. And fortunately, that is something that I can move the needle on. So that is what I'm doing. Now, I reached a high of 480 during the pandemic. Um, right now, I'm in the 380s. Uh, last week's official weigh-in was 384, which puts me at 96 pounds down. So I am very close to closing in on 100 pounds lost. And I have a good momentum going, and I want to keep it going. Part of the reason I'm doing this is because, first of all, I like sharing my story. I know that I like seeing when other people are sharing their weight loss stories on social media, and I want to do the same. Now, this is something I've really debated with. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. I feel very vulnerable doing this, but I've told most of the people in my life. So if you know me in person, you probably already know this, but I was recently diagnosed diabetic, type two diabetic, uh, not surprisingly. Uh, on April 30th, I had my blood work done and whew, it was, it was wild. My A1C was 11.8. Uh, I've since brought it down to 7.8 and I have another blood test uh, and check in here in about two weeks. So hopefully here in a bit, I'll have even lower numbers to share with you. I'm not happy about the fact that I'm diabetic, obviously. I wish I'd taken care of my health sooner, but I didn't, and, and it is what it is. Now, this is the part that I think I am most nervous about sharing. Uh, I am on Ozempic, a statin, and metformin. I take 500 milligrams of metformin twice a day. Uh, I do feel that the Ozempic helps my weight loss, although I would not have taken it without being diabetic for exactly one reason. And that one reason is that my insurance would not have covered it. And I simply couldn't have afforded it. As it is with my insurance, I currently pay $25 a month, which, which I can pretty readily afford. Now, I'll admit I have not really felt the new the food noise disappear with Ozempic. Uh, you know, the GLP-1 receptor agonists tend to it seems like one common thing is that food noise, like, ooh, eat, 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 disappears. Uh, I don't have that. Uh, you know, I still like to eat as much as I ever did. The the thing that I have noticed, uh, well, there are two things. One, it has helped to lower my A1C, so there is that. Uh, and the other is that the delayed gastric emptying, that is a thing that happens. But what I mean by that is just food moves through your digestive system slower when you're on a, a GLP-1 and I get full a lot quicker. So that is the, the main effect that I can immediately notice. Um, Ozempic is, I, I'm taking it because I'm diabetic. And if for some reason the doctor was like, hey, you're not diabetic, I would go off of it. I judge no one for how they choose to lose weight, uh, whether it's gastric bypass, GLP-1s, Weight Watchers, intermittent fasting, calorie counting, Atkins, keto, witchcraft. You do you, I'm doing me. I fully acknowledge that I hope I am not going to be on these meds forever. Uh, my goal is to eventually get off the diabetic meds, and I know that for that to happen, I need to be pretty much at goal weight. I also know that I'm going to be monitoring my food intake and my weight forever. I've been obese for my entire life. Like there have been periods of time where I may have just been overweight but I've always been obese, and for this to be a permanent thing, I ha I'm gonna have to watch it. I, there's not gonna be a case if I can just forget about it, and I'm okay with that. I am, I am at peace with it, I'm in a good place. 
Now, one thing I just feel I need to say about the GLP ones, because I know I'm going to get comments on this, and uh, at best, I'm going to ignore them. Some of the fear mongering around GLP ones is simply incorrect. One big one is that you have a ridiculously increased risk of thyroid cancer if you take them. And this was true in some animal studies. It has not been found to be the case in human studies. There was a large scale Scandinavian study involving 430,000 patients, and they found no significant increase in thyroid risk for those taking GLP 1s versus other diabetic treatments. So, you can say like, oh, well, they say this, if you do this, you're going to die. I'm like, yeah, probably we're all gonna die, but I don't think I'm gonna die of GLP ones. But my advice, as always, talk to your doctor. Now, one thing that I can say 100% true for me, the fear mongering, the health mongering, the, the focus on perfect eating that came about in the healthy living blog era, of the late 2000s into the early 2010s, that was bad for me. I have tried to blog before. Uh, I had, I actually still have some friends that I met in that blog era. I truly believe that trying to eat that perfect clean diet exacerbated my eating disorder. I went through a period where I thought, you know what? I can never have another diet soda. It's bad. I'll just have regular sodas in moderation. And I did that. I actually cut down on the amount of sodas I drank, but if I had a soda, it was regular. So I don't think that aspartame or sucralose or any of those things are bad for you. If you do, awesome. Do you. I I have no issue with having you know, a Dr. Pepper Zero once or twice a day. It's a nice treat that keeps me sane. You know what I also do? I still drink over a gallon of water a day as well. But I will, I will say that I am starting to, no, I'm starting to, I've actually done it. I have let go of all those beliefs that I had from the healthy living blog era. Uh, and truly being diagnosed diabetic and starting to incorporate real sustainable lifestyle changes that involves me eating food that I like in addition to increasing my vegetable and fruit and lean protein intake. This is starting to move the needle on my blood test numbers, the scale, and how I feel. So when I have my next blood workup done, I'll do an entire video about it and I'll share. Here's what my numbers were back in April when I wasn't yet diagnosed diabetic to what they are now after uh, six months of treatment. And again, I recognize that putting myself out there as an example of someone trying to lose weight in the public sphere it opens me up to public ridicule and judgment, and I accept that, and I'm okay with it because I know that it helps me when I see another fat person saying, hey, here's what I'm doing to lose weight, and I want to do that for others. Now, I really do try to live my life by one very simple rule. I do not take criticism from people I would not take advice from. My nutritionist, my oncologist, my gastroenterologist, and my primary care doctor know everything I'm doing, and they're all fine with it. And they're watching my numbers. They're watching my health. So I'm good with what I'm doing. I encourage you to reach out and get help however you need that as well in your arena. Now, how am I actually losing weight? What is the actual plan I'm following? Uh, calorie counting and exercise. I use an app called Chronometer. I've heard some people pronounce it Chronometer. I honestly don't know how to pronounce it, but it's just a calorie tracking app. It is by far my favorite. Uh, I actually paid $60 for the yearly subscription, but the free one is also phenomenal. To me, it's so much better than my fitness pal uh, for no other reason than that. Uh, in the US, we have to pay to have the barcode scanner. With this app, you don't, it comes free. And then the other is exercise. So uh, as far as the calorie counting, I met with a nutritionist from Nourish, which was covered by my insurance, completely free, uh, and my calorie target is currently set at 2,700 to 3,000 calories a day with a protein window of 203 to 225 grams a day. I readily acknowledge that is a lot and my numbers are huge, but a few things to point out. I am a man and I'm sorry, it's unfair, men get more calories. I exercise regularly. I'm six feet tall. I'm a big dude. I weigh 384 pounds. I, my calorie needs are higher than most. And truthfully, I would rather lose very, very slowly. 
if I lose a pound a week, I am thrilled with that because this is, I am in a slow marathon. I am not trying to sprint to the finish line. I have no interest in dropping big numbers. Honestly, losing more than two pounds a week, I immediately think, okay, well, it must be water loss or something. I'm doing this slow and steady, and that is how I want to do it. I also want to eat a lot of calories because I know as I lose weight, my numbers will drop. And if I go to like 1800 calories a day right now, I'm going to be eating even less when I get to go weight. And that is not what I want. So that's, that's my plan for eating 3000 calories a day. And I will periodically like once a week or so have a day where I go over that. Just, I don't want to get used to eating small amounts of calories. And I mean, metabolisms aren't, set in stone. It's not like if I were to eat 1800 calories for a few months that I would forever be trapped there, you know, but you, you kind of have to work your way up <clears throat> to higher numbers. So I'm just sort of staying there right now and I'm still losing weight. One to two pounds a week is phenomenal. That is where I want to be. Now, as far as my protein intake, that is a lot. And I'll share in a future video how I try to get that in. I'm going to post as regularly here on Retrofat as I can. Starting next week, each Monday will be an episode of a little series I'm calling Roll for Weight Loss, which is inspired by Roll for Sandwiches by Adventures in Ardia, who started on TikTok. He's also here on YouTube now. The reason I don't have one today is because I filmed the rolls today, and some of the items will take me a week to complete, and I want the first video to be fully done before before I show it. So next Monday, fingers crossed, rules for weight loss. I hope you'll stick with me. I'm excited to keep going. Ultimately, I want to hit my goal weight, whatever that is. Right now, I'm saying 180 pounds. I've never weighed that. So who knows if that will actually end up being what it's being. I just want to look good and be healthy. Those are my two barometers. I know I'm going to deal with loose skin. I'm going to deal with stretch marks. I'm going to deal with all the things that being over 400 pounds has done to me for my adult life. And I accept that. But I also know that uh, I'm 46 and I could have another 40 or 50 years on this planet, even being diabetic if I take care of myself. And that's what I want to do. So thanks for watching. I, if you're also on this weight loss struggle bus with me I, i'd love to follow your journey as well even if you just leave it in the comments below so thanks for watching uh and i'll talk to you soon